Well, this is what we're working on right here at the moment. This is a new manure pipe and the boys just got done stripping the three inch channel iron off of uh, the old one. We'll show you what that looks like here. It's outside. I didn't have any aluminum channel iron and I thought the new pipe would have came with it. But this load pipe here is shot. The end had a bunch of holes in it. And it has been patched in a couple of spots. So the boys just got done stripping that piece of channel iron off like I was saying. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the uh, spool gun that's on the um, 255 here. This is the one that we can use to weld aluminum with so we're just going to tack that up quick and these guys are going to take it up and put it on the pit or the pump on the front pit they had it set up there the other day they had to use it we didn't realize that it didn't have this support on there so we'll go ahead and weld it down Okay, we've got this job done. They can go ahead and put this back up above. Now, uh, I didn't realize it until after I got welded, but this uh, pipe was last replaced January 2018. So now we got the date on there now, March 2022. Yeah, I can't believe it lasted four years either. But, um, whatever. We'll see if this one will last that long. As long as we keep a certain somebody from backing into it, right? <laughs> right, Nate? So they ended up cutting the old one up, and that one's going to go on the scrap truck. So this process here to weld the aluminum is a little different. I can run aluminum uh, with the other gun. I gotta change wire. You gotta use a different gas. So we've got two tanks of gas on here. Argon for this process. And this is a Prince uh, spool gun. And what it has is a um, little roll of wire 
right up in the head itself. Aluminum is a lot softer. These are only like, I don't know, a pound and a half or something like that. And it hasn't got to push it only from here to the end of the gun. So we're only pulling it three inches and pushing it seven or eight. Whereas the MIG process is pushing at 15 feet and you can run into a problem with it getting caught in the liner when it's trying to push it with the drive wheels, which are uh, right there. Uh, you can't quite see it. Just like this. We've got the drive wheels here and the large spool of wire and um, it, it just, it causes a problem. Uh, inside the actual MIG welder so it's easier to use the spool gun. So Sarah's working on getting these panels welded in. She's got this left side done and Alex is over here working on this flatbed. She's got this left side done and she's working on the right side getting that down getting that welded down through here so what do you think of working on the older stuff uh, compared to the new stuff you get to breathe in all that old paint um this side here where you move the clamps down was it as hard to clamp that together no because it was already held with that other side there so Another thing that she has been working on is she has been filling in these spots here where the torch ended up torching through. And uh, she's got a little bit more to do there, but that looks pretty good. We didn't, we were thinking about putting a piece of flat bar on there, but that would just cause a problem. So once she gets this all welded on we can go up through here with a grinder grind off some of this paint on the edge lay down the rectangular tubing to stack that up to 10 inches tall because this is a a three by eight here and we need it 10 inches tall so we got some nice strong welds on there all the way up through and uh She's getting some maximum clamping action there, huh? Yeah. Killing it. Look at the amount of force she's got on that. Five clamps. <laughs> no monkeying around. Either the tube is going to move to the flatbed or the flatbed's going to move to the tube. All right? Well, what I'm working on is up in the front of the body here. <sighs> Being that we have went around it, we've got the sheet metal on the outside, I'm filling in the voids where haylage would get caught and not be able to slide off that uh, top part. We have, uh, oh, one of them load, uh, the, the bars that go across that we use to go across the side of the body to push that out. I've got one of them on the right side, push the bottom of the cab shield up to that. I've got that tack. Now I need to move it over and push that sheet metal up to this uh, support here that's going to hold that from doing this. We'll push that up and then we've got these panels in there and then I need to put one right here so that the stuff won't get built up as much. It'll basically be able to dump off of there i have done in the past just put another piece of sheet metal all the way around that on the inside but that gets rather expensive so we're just using six inch pieces and they're just tacked in we've got to continue with, uh we've got to weld that all the way up got to get some steps in here we've got some seams to weld here yet sarah was able to reach in and get the back ones the back couple and um we've got to get after the rest of these so 
I gotta get after it, don't I? Out of gas. Out of gas. Well, let's change out a bottle. Oh, what one is that? Is that the 9010? I think that's the 9010. I don't think I have any of that left. Oh, what are we running here? Uh, Mix 35. Yeah, this is the 9010. I don't know if I've got a bottle of that over here. I got one. No, I don't. I'll have to take it off of Jared's welder. He's got a 7525 on his, so I'll help you with that. This is what this looks like here. We've got uh, this jack stand in there. and We'll use another one on this other side here. Well, we've got the sills added on. So we're 10 inches tall. So this is gonna be able to slide on the slide rail system. This flatbed's a little longer than 24 feet. We're gonna cut the deck off. I'm gonna cut about a foot off the deck, add four feet on to make it 27 foot. Uh, this is where the 24 foot length of tubing ended here. So we'll just cut this off and then we can butt weld the pieces that we're gonna use right on to the end of that. We started up in the front here with welding the rectangular tubes down. And we also have our channel cut in with a D-ring hook to it, or welded to it, so that we can hook on to the D-ring in order to um, be able to pull this on and off the slide rail system. What I'm doing right now is I'm hooking the marker lights up that are on this flatbed. It had a wire that ran down through the center of the body here, the center of the flatbed that ran to the marker lights, but that's gonna be in our way, so I kind of moved it out of the way here. So we've gotta move a couple of clamps for Alex here so that we can keep that rectangle tube flush with the inside and tightly clamped to the eight inch tube that is there. Sarah's inside the silage box and the silage body here and what she's doing is welding down the panels that we have on this cab extension just so that we don't have 90 degree areas for halage to get caught. Uh, it's just a little panel on a 60 degree angle and uh, she'll be done welding that here in a little while. So we'll keep after it. We'll join up with you once we get on to the next step here. Well, we've got about as much done as we're gonna currently do to this body, this flatbed here, rather. Um, we've got as much done as we're gonna do to it right now. So we're gonna get it outside, flip it over, and then it's probably gonna be a few days before we get back on uh, this project. Um, I keep, you know, restating that we're gonna add on to it. So that's what we have to do yet, but we'll do that when it's in the upright uh, position. So what we're gonna do, me and Alex are gonna carry this outside. She's gonna lift up the front. I'm gonna lift up the back and we're gonna walk it outside. You can lift that up, right? <laughs> we'll put the telehandler up front, the forklift in the back, and we'll just very carefully take it outside, flip it back over, and then um, move it somewhere where it's going to be out of the way. We have more time into flipping these sills around and making them wider as it would take to <laughs> build a brand new flatbed. Uh, Sergeant Jason spent a couple of small days ripping it apart and then getting it ready to go back together. And then Alex has been a couple of small days here getting the sills welded into place and then getting stacking the uh, two by three on top. And then I worked on getting the uh, channel cut in up in the front here so that we can hook on to this d-ring with the cable and winch assembly we've got the lights wired for the front end 
And then there is marker lights in the center. We've got that wire coming down the side and then we've got to join up a tube to bring the wires along up alongside this um, one side. Once we get the back end added on to here. So we'll go ahead and get this carried outside and we'll join up with you in a few minutes here after we get it outside on the ground and flipped over. I had a a viewer stopped by the other day, gave me a bunch of log chains. Not that one, but he ended up giving me this vise. And this vise has a set of uh, pipe jaws to it. And then um, these are like rigging chains for like a tow truck or something. Got the uh, hooks on there. This is half inch chain here. A couple of lengths of that. Looks like a draw pin in there. Two, a two inch ball. A couple of half inch chain uh, repair lengths. Some cable. Just some stuff that he doesn't uh, use. And I can't remember the guy's name right at the moment here. But um, got this 5 16 chain here too. And um, some other lengths in there. So... We'll be able to put this stuff to use. So, what do you think? I don't know. Have you had enough of welding? No, I just... No, you just heard me talking, so you yeah. figured you'd join in and see what's going on. What about you? You're probably sick of the freaking welding on that damn thing, huh? No. I'm I climbed sorry. up this thing enough times today, and I all I did was that front end up there, you know? Helped you move some clamps, but kind of a miserable job being on an incline if this was level it would be fine but you either have to walk between the cross members or walk on top of them so um what did you rip you ripped two pair of pants didn't you just one just one same pair yeah i had some sharp pieces up in there and she ripped a couple of holes in her pants, so she had to change earlier. So, you know, if you were a guy, you would just kept going, you know. Yeah. It would have been no big deal. No, you know, so. Yeah. 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 Can't, can't be showing that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, let's get this thing outside.
Well, we ended up getting a flatbed out of here last night and I had a bunch of steel piled in here as well. We moved that out of here. Now we're getting ready to start the next project here. We've got a couple of things that we need to work on and one of them involves using the gantry crane for it and then we've got a truck that we've got to get pulled in here next door. So that is going to do it for this video. I want to thank you for watching and we will catch you at the next video.